hey y'all welcome to cookbooks with virginia do you want to know all about gumbo jambalaya etouffee do you want to know all about the cooking in louisiana well of course you do Welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And every Friday or near about every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I have Cookbooks with Virginia. And it really, truly is like one of my favorite parts of my week. It's part of my but part of my job. I love it. Absolutely love it because I get to interview chefs and cookbook authors that I love their books. I love their work. And I am super, super excited today to host Chef Kevin Belton of Cookin' Louisiana, Louisiana, Cook Louisiana. And y'all may not know, I mean, I'm a Georgia girl, but I grew up in Louisiana and my mama made all that Cajun and Creole food growing up. So it is a near and dear to my heart and my belly. So let's bring on Kevin and see what he has to say. Hi, Virginia. How are you? Oh, I'm great, Chef. I am so excited. I don't know that I, you knew that I grew up in Louisiana. So when I saw your book, I was like, oh, hell yeah, we're getting him on. You were in Alexandria, weren't you? I was, exactly. So you were in the middle. You had the best of both worlds. You had the best of North Louisiana and South Louisiana. I know. And it really is like two different states almost, you know, like the... I mean, it, you know, the, the the cuisine is so different, right? Yeah, it's, it's the same ingredients. But, you know, it's like where you were, Alexandria was right in the middle. Matter of fact, right. they call that area the crossroads. Right. Because North Louisiana is kind of part of that Southern Bible Belt mm -hmm. where it's a lot of meat dishes and chicken fried steaks and things like that. But they also use the ingredients that are found in Cajun and Creole cuisine. Right. right. So it's a, it's a wonderful mixture. So being in Alexandria, you could go either way. Oh, I know. Man, worlds. I loved it. Because, you know, when I was coming from Georgia... You know, when I went out there and it's like crawfish, you know, like, and this is, a, I'm 50, I turned 55 this week. So this was, you know, back before, like in the very beginning with Paul Prudhomme and Justin Wilson and all that. And that I was, you know, Cajun cuisine was just as, Cajun and Creole cuisine was just as foreign as like, you know, Thai or Indian or something like yep. it hadn't, you know, but before we get too deep in this and start, start uh, throwing those vowels around, Will you tell our, our viewers a little bit about yourself and, and, and how you are in your show and your books and all your great work? Well, I w I'm a New Orleanian. I was born in New Orleans, but I grew up listening to my grandmother and older relatives speak French. My dad's family came from a little town called uh, Lafouche Crossing, which is outside of Thibodeau, Louisiana. Uh huh. So I have webbing between the toes. You know, all the relatives, they talk like that, Misha, you know? But That's what it, I'm saying about those vowels, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I grew up where everything took place in the kitchen. Yeah. Huge house uptown, living room, dining room. You know, I'd have to pay my mom a nickel and she would take me to a tour through that area because the rest of the year was like roped off. You know, you didn't go in there. Everybody entertained in the kitchen. Yeah. And I try to explain to folks how. You know, often when you go to someone's house, they offer you, hey, what would you like to drink? Well, I grew up where, hey, come in the kitchen. You have to taste this. It's not what do you want to drink. Everything was done in the kitchen. So as a kid, I sat at that kitchen table with my mom and my grandmother. Uh -huh. I was cheap labor. So I, yeah. I peeled shrimp. You know, I, I, I did different things that I could, you know, like taking the husk off of corn and eventually cleaning the vegetables. And yep. eventually I got to use a knife uh -huh. to cut the tops off of strawberries and things like uh -huh. that. And so that was my spot to do my homework. But I always tell folks, you know, at that kitchen, not only did I learn to cook, but I learned business mm -hmm. because how to run a household, how to pay bills with the checkbook and all of that kind of stuff. You learned medicine when somebody got sick. They talked about a family member or a friend who got sick and they talked. So you learn a lot sitting at that table. Yeah. You know. You, I, I, we're similar in age. Yeah. So we grew up at that time where they told us, you know, hey, sit there. You could sit there as long as you didn't say anything. You could learn anything you wanted to. But as soon as you tried to chime in, <laughs> it's the conversation, leave. Yeah. So No, no, that's so lovely, though. You're, it's warming. It really is truly hearing your stories. It's like making me smile inside. So that's what I grew up with. So I didn't go to culinary school. Mm -hmm. I had friends in the business. And right. I would go help them out at their restaurants. But I also had the advantage. My mom was a teacher. 
Mm -hmm. So with my mom being a teacher, her sister was a principal. My dad's sister was a teacher. His brother was a principal. His wife's a teacher. So I grew up with all these educators. So mom says, anything you want to learn, pick up a book and read it. So when I first started working with Joe Kahn at the New Orleans School of Cooking, uh -huh. I was managed a store to learn about Louisiana products and inventory and ordering and things like that. So when I started to do the cooking classes, I knew I was going to be doing cooking classes eventually. So I got the professional chef's cookbook uh -huh. that they use at all the culinary schools. Right. And I started learning, reading it. And so from the friends in the business, but I got to hang out with Chef Paul Prudhomme. Yeah. With Mike Roussel, that was the, the, the chef over at Brennan's restaurant. Right, you know? right. Warren LaRuth. Warren LaRuth, Mr. Warren, a lot of folks don't realize this. The green goddess salad dressing for seven seas, he developed that. Wow. I and didn't know so, that. So to get to hang out, Leah Chase, so to get to hang out with all of these people. So I had kind of a book sense, mm -hmm. but I also had a lot of common sense from watching what mom did at home yeah. and watching what these chefs did in the restaurants, which in Louisiana cooking is very close to home. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes, it's yes. very, very close. It's very similar. So that sounds, so, that my, sounds amazing. Yeah, that, that's my education of food. Well, y'all, I want to I want to show the book off, y'all. So he has written this incredible book. Cook in Louisiana, flavor from the parishes parishes of the Pelican State. So y'all may not know it, but they don't have counties in Louisiana. They have parishes. And it is an absolutely beautiful book. We've, we have 64 I mean, parishes because of the fact that, you know, South Louisiana is predominantly Catholic. Mm -hmm. So you may not have had a town where you were. So when someone says, where are you from? You'd say, oh, I'm from St. Saint, Saint James Parish. And Mary. I love that too. It's I not where it. are you from? It's where are you from? Yeah, yeah. So you gave your church parish. You told people your church parish oh, yeah. where you lived. And that's how eventually when he divided up the state, it came to parishes as opposed to counties. Oh, uh, that's so interesting. We have a ton of people here. We've got we've got Beverly. Hey, Miss Beverly, she joins us. And we've got Lynn and Gail Skelton. Gail, I hope you're feeling better. Bartholomew, he was one of the ones that chimed in and said he how much he liked you. So you got a fan there. Thank you, you, Bartholomew. Yeah. I like that logo. That. I like that. Oh, look like know, that right, right, right. We've got Leslie's here and Lynn. He, she's originally um, from, from New Orleans, too. Jimmy Prophet, yet. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Jimmy you might have to explain it oh, to you. Oh, him. probably. Did you eat yet? Oh, geet, yeah. Yes. Geet, yeah. I'm like, geet, yeah. What does that mean? No, you hey, speak that. That's I'm right. I'm 6'9", 320. Of course I eat. 6'9". <laughs> How tall was your mom and grandmama? Mom was six foot. Dad was 6'2". They still can't figure out where I came from. Well, that's a good start. A lady six feet tall. Yeah. 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 And my mom is here. She was so excited. So, hey, Dad and Jeff. I know. So, Chef, um, Mama, when we moved to Louisiana, I was three years old, and she had like a little six-month-old toddler. And I just found this out a couple of years ago. But, um, Mama, to get to get to know this new place where she moved, she started cooking the food, and I just love that, you know. So, we, she was a Georgia girl, grew up, you know, with Georgia food, Southern, typical Southern food. But when when she was young and had these two children. She, mama made red beans and rice and gumbo and all that. So I really do love, 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 love your, your the food. And so we, I mean, it's, but it's like, all right, now sweet. Uh, what we got here? We got uh, short ribs food. on potato waffles. Oh yeah. That is amazing. And look at this. You know, I got to give credit where credit is due on the front of that book. Oh, that on sausage being smoked. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell me about the cover. My wife Monica, on the front cover, it down there it says Monica Belton. Yeah, it does. Monica's right there. Not, Monica's not from here, so I get to see Louisiana through all new eyes. Oh, uh, that's so lovely. So that's really great with doing this book. That I get to play with things, and she always pushes me. She says, eh, "You can do that. You can do more than that." So, like with the waffles, I love waffles. We make waffle bowls for stuff. So it's like, hmm, 
So I figured one day, why not throw some potatoes in the waffle ma machine and see? let's see what happens. And it's like, oh, this worked pretty good. Then it, yeah. it evolved into putting cheese in it. Then it evolved into, hey, let's put something on top of it. So it, yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. Well, you have that solid base and then you, then, I mean, I think that one thing that happens, you know, we always, as cooks, we, we want to rep, we want to represent tradition. We want to honor tradition, but sometimes like, um, you know, we have to, there's that creativity, right? You know, that's so important to a cook. And, and I always talk about like Southern food is it doesn't belong in a museum, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and I would say the same thing about Cajun and Creole, like New Orleans cooking, you know, it's like. It, it's pot food. It doesn't look pretty on the plate. Yeah, you there's a lot of brown. But yeah, it's a lot of brown. A lot of brown. It's, 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 but as long as it's good. And that's one of the, that's one of the things that, I, I think probably in my second book, a, a buddy of mine called me up and he says, hey, guess what I did? I took one of your recipes and then I took another recipe and I put them together. Uh huh. And he served, it was it was a spaghetti borderlaise, but he put a fish dish on top of the spaghetti. Basically, it was in olive oil, uh -huh, with uh -huh. Parmesan cheese and garlic and stuff like that. But he put a fish dish on top of that and served it on top of the, the borderlaise. Oh, and wow. so I always encourage people, when you're going through the book, you see a recipe, like that recipe you showed with the potato waffles, uh -huh. all right, that has a short rib on it, but I'm sure you could do that potato waffle with other dishes that's in the book. No, sure. Oh, man, y'all. So if you want to win a copy, I want you to go to my Instagram feed. We've got so many folks watching. Y'all go to my Instagram feed and you're going to follow me and follow Kevin if you don't follow us please do. And if you do, you can enter to win anyway, but go in and enter to win. You're going to tag a friend and follow the instructions there. And then we will choose a winner, um, a winner on, Oh man, look at that chest pie winner on Monday. I want that like right now. It, you know, you know, I, I, I did, was doing research about the chest pie because I knew it wasn't from Louisiana, but a lot of folks make it. And mm -hmm. I found out that somebody was making a pie they didn't have a lot of fruit. They didn't have any nuts to put in it. And they said, well, what, what kind of pie you make? Just pie. Uh -huh. so like, just pie, because it's almost like just a custard. Yep. The chest pie. I know. Well, I've heard that too. You always have to wonder. Mimi, my grandmother used to make a cake and she called it lemon cheesecake, but it wasn't. No, she called it lemon cheesecake, but it wasn't a cheesecake. It was like a lemon curd. And yeah. I kind of think that something like that kind of happened, that it just like evolved into that. So, yay, we've got Bobby Sheely here. Hey, Bobby Sheely. He's got a birthday this week, too. And Bartholomew says, cooking can kind of be like a jam session. Adding notes to a bass melody makes making new har harmonies. That is the truth. And he That's also- a musician just, talking there. I was going to say, and heading into king cake season. So let's talk wow. a little bit. Let's talk about this. I've got I want this so bad right now. Mama, look at that fried quail. Yes. Uh, mama, um, you know, my dad hunted in Louisiana, Sportsman's Paradise. You yep. got a lot of game out there. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier about coming from Georgia to Louisiana uh -huh. and when 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 K Justin Wilson and Chef Paul started creating, exposing Louisiana cuisine to the world. Mm -hmm. A friend called me from out of state. He's like, man, everything y'all are eating down there, we use for bait up here. Y'all are using bait and all the kind of stuff. It's like, well, I know it. I know it. had to use what was there, what was available. No, it's true. No, when I moved, so when sixth grade, when we moved back to Georgia and I talked about eating crawfish, people were like, what? You know what I mean? Like it was such a new thing. And like some of my favorite memories are growing, going crawfishing, like learning how to tie a chicken neck on that yep. web, you know, and, you know, and going out in the bayous and, oh, it's such a beautiful place. So, Chef, tell us a little bit. Tell us about your TV show. And I, I hear you've got great news about it going national. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's such a blessing. You know, it's uh, Create This Week is starting to run it nationwide. All It, it got picked up by 94 percent of the APT stations. Well, they, people, the aren't, people that watch PBS aren't stupid. So, every, but every station airs it a little different. Yep. It started airing uh, a few months ago here, 
and and in Mississippi, Florida, spots in certain parts of Texas and around the country, different times. But there are some areas that won't are just starting to air it now. Right. But once it airs the first 26 episodes, then it goes to create where it'll run. Matter of fact, I hardly ever watch myself, but I, I was about to go to bed last night and they create had on a show, my third series, which was celebrations, which if I had a food booth, these are the things that I would make. Uh -huh. And I had to watch it just because I hate watching myself, but I was making, I was doing burgers. Uh -huh. I did a crawfish and shrimp burger. And if anybody's never had crawfish, picture the texture of a shrimp, but a little sweeter. That's the best way I could describe crawfish. Perfect, perfect, perfect description. Perfect description. But I also did an ultimate bacon burger where I made bacon jam to put on it. And I made a, a burger. I called it the ultimate cheeseburger where I made mac and cheese and pan fried the mac and cheese. That was the bun with the burger. Yeah, in between. So I had to watch that last night because just to like. That would make me hungry. Oh, my gosh. Mac and cheese bun. Yeah, yeah. Dang, that is serious. That is serious. All right, we've got um, I'm, uh, we've got a viewer here. That's right. I'm in Texas and watch Kevin Uncreate. Yay, Lynn. That's fantastic. So, Chef, you, um, since we've got New Year's New Year's Eve, I want to thank you again for coming on because I know it's a crazy day and in the holidays and all that. But are you going to show us? A, um, will you show us your black eyed pea salad? Sure. You know, Mom always made black eyed peas for luck, cabbage for wealth, you know? Okay. And, and, and we had, I'm sorry? We had collard greens. So mama, your mama did cabbage? Yeah, mom did cabbage. Nice. Yum. But something, and, and, and I want, if, if anybody wants to try something different, I'm going to show you the salad in just a second. Okay. But I took black eyed peas and cooked them one time. Then uh -huh. I mashed them up like mashed potatoes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yum. I took cabbage leaves, blanched them, in a pot of boiling water for just a couple minutes, shot them in ice water. But I made a cornbread dressing where mm -hmm. I sauteed onion, celery, green pepper, uh, threw in some on dewy sausage that was cubed. Mm. All right. Dumped that on some cornbread, a little bit of stock to it to make like a, and I wrapped that stuffing in the cabbage leaves. Yum. And I put like the black eyed pea mashed potato on the plate and put the cabbage with the stuffed on dewy the cornbread stuffing on top of it and called it cabbage in a cloud on a cloud. Oh my yum. Just, oh my goodness. That's for something different. Yeah. So for this one, basically what I, what I have here for this salad, for the salad dressing, basically I start with a half a, a quarter cup of rice wine vinegar and vegetable oil. Okay. okay? And all I want to do is just, just get that going. Now to that, we're going to put in, I have just a, a teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of garlic powder, half uh -huh. teaspoon of sugar. Okay. And I have a little bit of my Creole seasoning. Uh-huh. So we'll get that in. So that's our seasonings. And what's nice with this, this is one of those salads that if you make in advance, you can dress it because it's better if it marinates in the refrigerator. Oh, yeah, get those flavors going. So here we go. Here we have that, all right? So what I have, half of a red onion. Okay. okay? Just diced up really fine. A red bell pepper. Nice. Now, I know some folks don't like bell pepper. Guess what? This is a great thing about Louisiana cooking. If you don't like it, leave it out. There you go. You like it more, okay? That's so right. You can do this, you can do this with yellow. You can do it with green if you want, if you want to mix and match. Mm -hmm. But the tomatoes... I'm using cherry tomatoes. You can, a lot of times I'll use Roman tomatoes and dice them up or Creole tomato when they're in season and dice them up. But these are cherry tomatoes that I just quartered. So Got we'll it. toss that in there. Now here comes some seasoning and heat. Green onion, uh -huh. cilantro, and diced jalapeno. Woo really, really fine. But it, it's not going to be too bad. So look, let's just give this all a toss. Let's take our dressing, just pour the dressing right over it, okay? And y'all, we're going to have this recipe. Um, Chef Kevin and Monica sent me the 
recipe. So what I'll do is I'll post the recipe on my Facebook page and on the YouTube and all. So on the YouTube, I sound. sound I'm like trying to get that real close. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at those colors. All right. Oh my gosh, it's pretty. So you can either cook black eyed peas or if you want to just use canned, just drain them. Okay. Okay. We mix in the black eyed peas. Up right there. Now all we have to do is give this a nice little toss. And you see, this is great. You can do this today and put it in the refrigerator mm -hmm. because it's it's better the next day once it sits for a little while. But hey, it's all good. And that so, is good. Get, and that is like good and good for you, man. That is like a whole can bunch of vegetables. Can you get that? Um, that's delicious looking. See, I have a light here. I'm turning the light a little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Look now we got that. it. Oh, that All looks right. so good. I want to make that for tomorrow. Now, here's a neat way to serve it. Take a little shredded cabbage. Oh. Put that in the bottom of the bowl. Take some of your salad. And just spoon right up. Oh, how about getting it on top in the bowl as opposed to <laughs> out of the bowl? All right. And, and what's nice is, I don't know if you guys can, can see, uh -huh, I think yeah. it's like kind of layered there. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, oh wrong way. I know. It's weird driving on that thing. Oh, that yeah. Nice. That looks so good. But you know, what's nice is if you're doing this for in, uh, a couple of individuals, you could serve it just like this. Right. If you're doing it for like, a, if you have like six or seven people over, or you have six or seven family members, do it in a bigger bowl. Put mm -hmm. your cabbage on the bigger bowl and then layer it. I'll put it in a trifle bowl. Oh yeah! How pretty is that? And serve it that way, and it and it it looks pretty, but more importantly, it tastes good. Yes. But the biggest thing about cooking any Louisiana recipe is, and and, and I guess not just Louisiana recipe, any cooking you guys do at home, put in the things that you like. Mm -hmm. A friend recent, hey, I tried this new recipe. I'm like, how was it? He's like. It was great, except for such and such. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, oh, I don't like it. Well, why'd you put it in? Well, the recipe said so. So, no, no, don't do that. Don't I give that. people permission with my book. If they're, let me, oh, I'm sorry. Monica, I hate, Monica hates when I move out of, out of screen. That's okay. We got right. you. Look, if there is something in the book and it is something that you don't like or you're allergic to it, guess what? Take a pen, mark a line through it. All right. Just uh, take a pencil, mark a line through it, write in a substitute. And that's the other thing. Things can be substituted. Right. right? For like if someone doesn't like cilantro, because I get that a lot. I don't like cilantro. What can I use? My opinion is you can pretty much put parsley in everything. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and if it calls for parsley, if you want a little bit of stronger herbal flavor, use cilantro. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's the great thing about cooking is to play with it. Just like Bartholomew said, you know, it, it, it you have that bass line there. The drummer gives the beat. But what happens after that? It's like jazz. Just go with it. Just go for it. All right, Chef, I got to ask you what this is. Couscous? Uh -oh. Couscous. Couscous is a Cajun dish that was cooked to keep you quiet. You know, like if mama's cooking in the kitchen, all it is is a little cornmeal fried up in a skillet. Okay. And it was almost like, you know, like the, the hush puppy mm -hmm. to keep the dogs quiet. Yeah. So Kush Kush was made where here, eat this. Mama just whipped that up right quick. A grandma usually would whip that up right quick and just give you something to hold you over while she cooked. Oh, that's so wonderful. So y'all, that's just beautiful. It really is. This is a, a gorgeous book, chef. I mean, so it's and, and we really have so is. many different nationalities and different cultures around our state that, that that was fun to take some of those cultures and put in it, like the, the tamales from Zuwali, Zuwali, Louisiana, up in the, up in the north west corner. Uh huh. All right. They have a tamale festival. And oh, it's, crazy. It, oh, it, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. But who would have thought tamales in Louisiana? But they're great. <laughs> No, and it's so funny, though, because I do think, you know, like people always people are like I, in, in my years of doing this, it's like, oh, well, they think Southern food is only like biscuits and fried chicken and overcooked greens. Yeah, and that is yeah. so not true. 
you are yeah. proof positive, you know. And then the other thing about Southern cooking, like the the if we count Texas, which Texas may not be considered the South to some people, including Texans, but if you think about Texas all the way to Georgia and up to Virginia, that is like a, a quarter of the a quarter of the of the United States, right? And yep. the seafood from Louisiana is different from the seafood in Florida recipes and different from Charleston, you know, like yeah. South Carolina and stuff. So, you know, there's so much to Southern food. I grew up, this is where I grew up. This is so pretty. You know, I got to tell you, oh yeah, yeah. Denny Colbert. Denny and I worked together on my very first book and I was able to get Denny back to, to work on this, this fourth book. And, oh, Denny does such great work. But it's I gotta beautiful. tell you something. My idea when I think of Southern cooking, mm -hmm. that means you're cooking for someone else. It's I wouldn't think of it as fried chicken and greens and stuff like that. But Southern cooking, true Southern cooking, is that you're cooking for others. You're cooking for people that you love. That's what Southern cooking is. That is so. That is just so lovely, y'all. Y'all gotta enter to win Creole pork sauce picante. I hadn't eaten lunch yet, and I am, <laughs> I am like, my, I, I, you can probably hear my stomach growling. Beautiful recipes. You're, you're obviously with your series and your books. You're obviously a, a natural teacher. This, oh yeah, the crab this cakes. Is really incredible. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. And you know, you, you know, you were talking about like the sauce pecan, and we were talking about how a lot of recipes in Louisiana cooking call for a roux, which mm -hmm. is basically yeah. flour and butter or flour and oil. Mm -hmm. Cook the longer it, it is, the flour changes color. It's just like a slice of bread in a toaster. But flour has gluten in it. Some folks are allergic to gluten. They can't have uh -huh. gluten. Right. But rice flour, potato flour will cook just like regular flour. It'll change colors. So uh -huh. it'll give you that toasted flavor. But then to thicken it up for gravy, since it doesn't have any gluten in it, keep a pack of instant mashed potatoes in the pantry. Ah. A little bit of instant mashed potato in it will give you that thickness that you need for a gravy, but you're using a rice flour, potato flour that doesn't have any gluten in it. That's so smart. That is so, that is, that is really, uh, that is so smart. Yeah, there's, I think that people, there are two types of people, right? People that follow recipes religiously and then people that don't, right? And there's, in my mind, there's a little bit of room, but it's great that you have these tips and techniques in here and it's definitely oh look at that that is uh -oh, Jeff, that is old that? school man that is like oh look. that terrine yeah that, wow. terrine, that that you know and it's something that i'm not a big kind of I, I wouldn't call it cute cooking but uh -huh. like terrine i don't make a lot of terrines but i decided you know what i'm going to make a terrine for the book for this show and it worked. It, it it came out beautifully. I mean, it, it's yeah. That was a goodie. It's a, it's a good thing to know. And look at this sweet picture of y'all. This is so pretty. Yep, that's the wife. You know the other that. thing. If you can show folks one thing, it, it, in the front of the book. Yes, sir. About page four. Mm -hmm. Three or four. There's a picture of the crew. Yep. Look at you. Let me tell you what, gang. Those everybody sees me. But those folks at that team there, I couldn't do a thing without them. They are so wonderful. And, and you know what? They hold me accountable because when what we cook, the crew eats. Oh, yeah. So we do two shows a day. We do a show in the morning and a show in the afternoon. That's a so great connection. What's cooked in the morning is lunch. Uh -huh. What's cooked in the afternoon is refrigerated, cooled down, and it's part of lunch the next day. Right, 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 right. So the crew will let me know if something doesn't work out. No, you got it. You got it right there. Well, Chef, it has really been such an honor and a pleasure to have you on Cookbooks with Virginia today. I'm so grateful for you taking the time during this busy holiday season. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Happy belated birthday. Happy birthday to y'all all. All of you all and everybody have a safe and happy new year. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Y'all, you have a happy new year too. Thank you, Monica, too. Right. Bye. Bye. Y'all, that was so great. I am starving. I mean, like seriously starving. That breakfast wore off a long time ago. So please go to my Instagram page and enter to win. 
Um, and if you're watching this on Facebook, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you're watching it, give it a share. Let's get Chef Kevin out in the world and cookbooks with Virginia too. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Um, I've got some really great guests lined up for next year, for 2022. I want to thank everybody for watching this year. And I'll see you in 2022. Bon appetit, y'all. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye now.